So what I want to talk about today is uh, learning by doing or experiential learning. This basically helps to embed knowledge into your memory and it provokes a bigger effort from you to remember exactly what you're doing. So this method has always been my natural way of learning and so if I'm left to learn something on my own without any outside intervention, this is exactly how I do it. The first outlet I ever had for expression was writing. Um, I didn't have a learned way of writing. Uh, you know, I didn't have a learned way of expressing my feelings on paper. I called them poems, but they were most probably um, something a lot more um, rudimentary, a lot more raw, um, something definitely that was more unfinished. Uh, in the early years, they certainly lacked refinement, but what I was actually doing was just linking my subconscious with the paper through the pen I was building a relationship between these three things and basically nobody can teach that. Um, you have to form your bond with creativity and you have to learn the concept of the creative endeavor and you have to learn the language of it. So we're talking about basic principles and then immersing ourselves within the context of those principles and finding our way on our own. Let's face it, lots of us want somebody else to tell us exactly what to do. Um, and basically, if we follow everything that other people say, we'll basically just do everything the way they do them. Uh, and on that note, you definitely don't have to do things the way I do them. But the point I'm uh, trying to make is that you should have your own relationship with all of your creative outlets. So if you want to become an artist, you have to do all of the thinking, all of the feeling yourself, and you have to do it in your own individual way. So well, to put it in another way, creativity is for everyone and it's an individual pilgrimage of understanding. If you're fortunate to go to perfumery school, you'll learn through the institution of perfumery, but it's not the only way because there's always your way. So if all else fails, and this goes for everything, not just this subject, if you don't have another opportunity, then fear not, just do it your way. Whatever way that is, whatever it looks like, whatever it sounds like, uh, just do it your way. Um, I've spent around three years of my overall perfume journey just blending smells and, you know, just immersing myself in the concept of perfume, but, you know, in an un uncultivated fashion. What does this mean? It means basically I've primarily focused on a very stripped back approach to perfumery and I've interacted with perfume in its most rudimentary form. So I'm talking about drops as opposed to weight as a form of scale. Although I've always weighed each drop, uh, you know, since the very beginning, what I haven't actually done is controlled the weight of each drop. So what I'm referring to is adding a drop of an oil to a compound, recording the weight of that drop, um, uh, you know, which means that the weight of the oil is determined by how viscous the oil actually is. And I'm uh, talking about formulating on the go as opposed to formulating on paper beforehand and making a formula out of to 100 or 1000. I'm also talking about what you might call guesstimation or instinctive decision making. Now, I approach the things I want to learn in the same way. I basically do them before I even know how to do them. So, you know, have you ever uh, done something without knowing how to do it? Because when you do this, all you have to rely on is your instinct. Um, and, you know, before I do anything else, uh, if there's something that I want to learn, I just basically develop my instinct for it. So I take the most basic idea of the thing I'm interested in and I use my instincts to experience it. Now, when that's all said and done, all roads lead to refinement. So, you know, all of the formulas I've shared on YouTube so far, they've all been products of instinct development. But today I want to share a refined formula to illustrate the difference. Now, this isn't like, you know, a perfume I even like really, but um, it, it's constructed well, it works, it, it's, it's built well. It has modifiers, blenders, fixatives, um, it, be, it has a heart, you know, it's it's basically a, a rosy red apple fragrance. Um, and I structurally it works and, and it works this way because I've really controlled exactly how much of each oil I've actually contributed to the compound. So I've really taken control there. I'm not just, you know, adding a drop, writing down how much that drop weighs. I've decided on paper beforehand how much I want uh, each component to weigh. And then I've administered, uh, I've administered the oils accordingly. 
So what I've done is I formulated my perfume first making the weight of all my components add up to 100 grams and then I've scaled down uh, my formula down to 2.5 grams although I'm not sure why I did this. In my head I was going to make a formula of 4.5 grams uh, which would give you a 15% concentration uh, at a volume of uh, 30 milliliters uh, but for some reason I got 2.5 stuck in my head and I made the formula uh, add up to 2.5 grams. Now this isn't a problem because we can scale this up um, but at 2.5 grams you get very rounded numbers so it's a lot easier to formulate with with the, 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 the formula adding up to 2.5 grams in this case but yeah I really should have made uh, 4.5 grams uh, for this demonstration. Not that it's important this is just uh, to um, uh, just to make my point, um, uh, basically you can, if you want to make up this perfume, it's better to make 2.5 grams uh, as opposed to 4.5 grams because then you're not going to use as much oils and you can get a, a sense of the, the smell of this perfume. Although the smell is not the most important thing, it's more about the structure, it's more about how the perfume performs and uh, you know how it moves from the top through to the, the mids uh, down to the base notes. Um, and that's basically just really what I wanna talk about. So instead of my formula, depending on how much a drop weighs as it leaves my perfect, I've decided for myself how much I want each drop to weigh. So if I were to take, as an example, a drop of methyl and franolate and a drop of cardamom, and if I were to use the same perfect with, with both drops, um, both drops will be significantly different in weight because methyl and franolate is basically more viscous. So I think like a drop of cardamom will be something like 0 0.010 grams. Uh, and it's probably something like 0 0.025 grams uh, difference between them both um, with uh, methyl and franolate weighing the most. So what I've done is I've refined this process by not letting my pipette define the weight of each drop. So instead I can decide to have uh, 0 0.010 grams of both methyl and phenolate and cardamom giving me equal amounts by weight as opposed to uh, equal amounts by drops which actually wouldn't be equal amounts um, so yeah one drop of methyl and phenolate and one drop of cardamom uh, are not equal amounts so controlling the weight of each drop helps to refine your perfume formula uh, also, making your perfume formula add up to 100 or 1000 makes it easier to scale your formula up or down. Okay, so here we are with the formula. Now, this is a feminine perfume and it's uh, basically a rosy apple fragrance. So, yeah, all I want to do is basically just show you how I have controlled the weight of each oil that I have added to the compound. So I haven't added a drop of oil to the compound and then wrote down the weight. I have selected the weight first and then I have added exactly the amount that I wanted to add. Um, so, you know, this perfume is constructed in a way that uh, basically all of the oils occupy the headspace of the perfume. There's a real natural progression from the top down to uh, uh, the base. It has a very smooth decline and, um, you know, structurally it works well as a perfume. It's not my favorite perfume, uh, you know, it's definitely a very simple uh, perfume, but I put it together just to demonstrate uh, th this point um, with regards to refinement and just having overall control over your uh, formulas. Um, so yeah, I have some uh, apple red in the top. This is something I purchased from the perfumers world. I don't know a lot about this material, but it's definitely a, a mixture of, of different components to uh, make the smell of red apple. Um, so, it, you know, this is a, a piece of software that's actually free for you to download. And I do recommend this piece of software. I might make a separate video uh, with regards to it, but it, it really does work well. It does everything that you would want it to do. Um, so yeah, I have, uh, you know, 0 0.130 uh, grams of apple red. I have added uh, 0 0.100 grams of pink grapefruit. I have added 0.070 grams of verdox and 0.100 grams of 
a, a rose molecule called Wardia. Um, now moving down to the heart notes, I have added 0 0.150 grams of Orantiol, 0 0.130 grams of Alinalu based uh, basil, 0 0.270 grams of Hedione, 0 0.080 grams of uh, Jasmine Sandback Blossoms. Now this again is a mixture I purchased from the Perfumers World, so this isn't real Jasmine Sandback Blossoms. I have added 0 0.280 grams of uh, a Lyral Replacer, so Lyral uh, is uh, not something that is used anymore with, you know, in terms of uh, adhering to the IFRA guidelines, so this is a replacement for Lyral. Um, I have added 0 0.120 grams of Myol. 0 0.140 grams of methyl ionone. Moving on to the base notes, I have added 0 0.040 grams of aldehyde C16, 0 0.300 grams of uh, Ambrox Super, 0 0.020 grams of Servette, 0 0.270 grams of Galaxolide, and 0 0.300 grams of iso e super if you can see in the purity column you can see uh, th this basically refers to um, uh, the dilutions uh, so as you can see we've used uh, ambrox super in a 10 percent dilution civet in a 10 percent dilution and galaxolide in a 50 percent dilution everything else is uh, 100 percent uh, full concentration um, in the diluting column here, you can you know see what it's been diluted with. So in this case, we've we've got DPG as the primary uh, uh, dilutant. Um, and yeah, not to whittle on too much about this uh, piece of software because I probably will make a separate video. But this is also um, you know safe in terms of IFRA uh, in a 15% concentration at least. Um, uh, and yeah, basically that's the that's the formula. Just to have a look at my formula, uh, you know, the theme of the perfume is uh, red apple essentially, but uh, the Wardia uh, really comes through and merges with that uh, red apple and it lasts throughout. So it's, a, it's definitely a rosy red apple fragrance. So just to support that, I've got a little bit of uh, pink grapefruit and verdox. Verdox is essentially sort of uh, green apple, a little bit whiny. Uh, I just thought that would probably work well. And uh, yeah, just to support that, I've got a bit of Orantiol. I've got a lovely little based basil, uh, just uh, you know to help everything blend together, just to fill in the gaps. I've got some Hedione, uh, a little bit of Jasmine has the same effect, helps things blend uh, uh, better together. Uh, the Lyral replacer, the Myol to Lily of the Valley uh, molecules. Methyl ionone is another good blender and you know obviously sort of methyl ionone you know red springs to mind apple red apple red springs to mind pink grapefruit you know red pink springs to mind uh, wardia rose red springs to mind so there's kind of a, th a color theme to this perfume as well um, and then I've used aldehyde C16 which is, of course is strawberry. The reason you know why I chose aldehyde C16 is it did seem to fit with uh, with the theme of this perfume and the other oils that I've chosen but also I've never really used it in a perfume it's not something that I like I really dislike this molecule so I'm, I'm always trying to fit it in there somewhere just to see where I can actually use this um, this aldehyde and actually like the results. Um, I added some Ambrox Super in there. Um, I didn't really know how that would work, but it, but it works fine. Uh, and some Servette just to work with in, in, uh, in co uh, correspondence to uh, the Jasmine note. Uh, I added some Galaxolide uh, and some ISO E Super. Um, there are 16 ingredients in, in this perfume, uh, but you know, it does, it does um, seem to have a bit of attitude to it. I haven't yet mixed it with ethanol, it's just basically the compound that I, that I have. Um, so yeah, um, as we can see uh, on this uh, piece of software, uh, we can see some descriptors, uh, some adjectives, etc. with regards to the notes of this perfume. So the red apple is, is fruity, with the, you know, the pink grapefruit, we've got uh, bitter, sweet, terpene, citrus, grapefruit, 
Uh, we've got uh, fruity, woody, green apple, uh, also herbal. Uh, the wardia is floral, rose, uh, sweet, fresh, warm, petal. Uh, Orantiol is uh, lily, orange blossom. Uh, basil is aromatic, spicy, herbaceous. Uh, very close to the smell of freshly picked basil. And uh, yeah, I would say it was. I, I like it more than a, a sweet basil or holy basil. Um, and then we have the jasmine, which is floral, fruity, uh, fru fruity? floral, fruity. Uh, we have the lyral, which obviously, as I said, is lily or muget. Um, uh, also a little rhubarb, woody. Um, and then you have the myol, which again is, um, you know, lily of the valley, magnolia. Um, methylinone, sweet powdery, fruity, floral, violet, uh, orris, woody. Aldehyde C16, sweetie, fruity sweetie fruity sweet fruity strawberry um definitely more of a synthetic strawberry it kind of remind this is well you know think about the smell of strawberry mixed with plastic that's kind of like what i feel about aldehyde c16 um ambrox super ambergris Servette, uh, animal fecal, urine, uh, galaxolide very diffusive sweet floral musk iso a super woody dry ambergris cedar old wood ketonic phenolic and that's basically it. Um, as you can see, I've you know really controlled exactly how much of each oil I wanted to add to the compound. Uh, I haven't relied on how viscous the material is. Uh, uh, I haven't added the oil and then you know wrote down however much it weighs. I've took control of each oil and I've put exactly how much I want into that formula. Now I will you know just say again, um, I have constructed this. Uh, perfume with regards to the relative odor impact of each oil uh, this is something you can find on the perfumers world if you look up an oil it will tell you what the relative odor impact is and this uh, refers to uh, the headspace of a perfume and uh, yeah I've, I've roughly made everything um, have the same relative odor impact in the perfume uh, so that's how I've constructed this perfume with regards to the percentages of each oil I will talk about that further uh, along the line uh, in another video um, but this video uh, was specifically just with regards to taking control of uh, the weights so I hope you've enjoyed this video I just really wanted to highlight uh, the, the refinement element of uh, whatever it is you're learning however you learn uh, essentially you start off in a very rough uh, rudimentary fashion and you basically progress in the end everything comes together and uh, you, you you have this process of refinement and uh, yeah I had a very stripped back approach to perfume in the beginning and um, now I'm just you know uh, demonstrating taking more control so I don't really want to lose anybody um, you know I generally talk to the beginner I keep everything in drops etc but I kind of feel like I need to move on um, because refinement is obviously a part of the whole thing and it's something to work towards and it's all fair and well making videos with regards to drops and you know making these very rough perfumes that are just really there to inspire um, but by, all, by no means are any of the masterpieces so you know if you do want to get to a, a place where you are actually taking as much control as you possibly can then you really need to start on the path of, of refinement uh, so yeah I'll be back shortly um, I think I'll make a video just going over this piece of software it's really great it's free I'll put a link down in the description um and uh yeah i'll move on to uh, maybe talking about the relative order impact um uh, philosophy of of of, of uh the, you know constructing the perfume um but yeah for now this is what i've got so as always have fun making perfume and i'll see you again shortly